Sure, life on Earth is great, but what's going to happen when the Earth is overpopulated? If we're to consider living on another planet, then Mars seems to be the most possible option. Well, if there's something terrible that happens on Earth, either made by humans or natural, we would want to have, like, life insurance for life as a whole. So if the human race wants to survive, moving to Red Planet is not a bad idea. Then there's kind of the excitement and the adventure. Moving to planet Mars? Would you take a trip to Mars if you had the opportunity? Well, it might sound like a myth, but Elon Musk, a business magnate and engineer, and also the founder of CEO of SpaceX, is trying to make sure there's enough of a seed of human civilization somewhere else to bring it back and shorten the length of the Dark Ages in case there is a Third World War, or if the resources here are used up. I've been getting lots of comments to research and talk about this topic, so here we are. Rest your back, sit back, and watch as I tell you in detail all you need to know about how Elon Musk is going to colonize Mars. Why did Elon Musk plan to colonize Mars? How much does he charge to relocate people to the red planet called Mars? Well, stick around till the end of the video because everything you need to know, we're going to talk about it. And before we get started, be sure you give this video a like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. And trust when I say you don't want to miss the next video. And while you're doing that, let's talk about how Tesla's Elon Musk plans to colonize Mars. Elon Musk is hell-bent on colonizing Mars. That's the spirit with which he founded SpaceX, his rocket company, in 2002. He was frustrated that NASA wasn't doing more to get people to the Red Planet, concerned that a backup plan for humanity wasn't being developed because at some point, planet Earth will become an uninhabitable wasteland. Ever since he was a kid, he's been seen to be smart and intelligent. He was bullied in school, but it never stopped his love for study. As big as Elon Musk is now, imagine being the loser who beat him up in school. How would you feel? Tell me in the comments below. Elon Musk is so smart, currently he's estimated to be worth $128.6 billion. He's believed to have enough resources to colonize Mars. Under the company SpaceX, he has now revealed his plan to do so. According to his plan, the colonization of Mars would include one million people, which is about the size of a large city. His first plan to making a reality is to build a starship. That rings a bell? Starship, formerly known as Big Farcon Rocket or BFR, presently called Super Heavy. The rocket boosters that will allow the vehicle to escape Earth's gravity are called the Super Heavy. The Starship is a 35-story space commercial vehicle with an estimated value of $52 billion, and it should be launched by 2023, says Musk. His specialty is technology and transportation, so he wants to make sure colonizers can go around space and not just that his space vehicle would be used for high-speed transportation around the world. I'll tell you what, he's not joking about the high-speed part. Elon figured out how to use finer material already at his disposal for this endeavor. The most amazing part of this spaceship is that it will make traveling to Mars more economical because it's reusable. It can take a hundred people at a go. So let's take a look at this stunning spaceship. It's expected to be 72 meters or 236 feet long and 9 meters or 30 feet in diameter with a gross liftoff mass of 3,680,000 kilograms. Nine rockets are visible overhead. Off to one side sits a slightly charred cone-shaped Dragon capsule that a year ago became the first commercial spacecraft to be launched into orbit and recovered. So as you think of traveling to Mars at high speed, it's important to think of how you're going to land because Mars is a cold, unforgiving, and almost airless rock located 140 million miles from Earth. Astounding ingenuity is required to land even a small spacecraft there today, let alone a giant spaceship full of people and cargo in the future. But our smart man has already placed that in consideration. The Big Forcon rocket space vehicle uses 28 Raptor engines for safe landing controlled via a supersonic retro propulsion. The BFR is said to be capable of landing anywhere in the solar system. All very impressive, but what really sets SpaceX apart has made it a magnet for controversy, and that's the prices. As advertised on the website, a Falcon 9 launch cost an average of $57 million, which is less than $2,500 per pound to orbit. 
That's significantly less than what other U.S. launch companies typically charge, and even the manufacturer of China's low-cost Long March rocket, which the U.S. has banned importing, says he cannot beat SpaceX's pricing. Musk announced beforehand that their performances will increase and prices will decline over time, as he wrote on SpaceX's website, as is the case with all other technology. The spaceship is constructed of stainless steel tanks and structure, holding subcooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellants powered by the 28 Raptor rocket engines. Planet Mars is different from planet Earth. You're going to die slowly and painfully if you lack vitamin C. So he plans to take a thousand spaceships and a million tons, quote unquote, of vitamin C to make life on Mars sustainable. The goal of his Starship transportation system to Mars will be to launch each of SpaceX's reusable Starship rockets about three times per day on average, while carrying a hundred ton payload on each flight, with roughly a thousand flights per year carrying more than a hundred tons of cargo on each flight. At that rate, Musk theorizes each Starship rocket would make roughly 1,000 flights per year, launching a total of 100,000 tons of cargo into orbit. Musk is very determined to make living on Mars a big success. For instance, he said there'll be lots of jobs on Mars. Food would be grown on solar-powered hydroponic farms located either underground or in an enclosed structure. Musk plans to send SpaceX rockets to Mars with cargo by 2022, according to the SpaceX website. A second mission, which would take more cargo and crew, is targeted for 2024. Musk has also said he'll send a million people to Mars by 2050. He knows he might be long dead before Mars becomes self-sustaining, but he said he'd like to at least be around to see a bunch of the ships land on Mars. To achieve the large payload, the spacecraft would first enter Earth's orbit, where it's expected to be refueled before it departs to Mars. After landing on Mars, the spacecraft would be loaded with locally produced propellants to return to Earth. The expected payload for the Starship launch vehicle is between 100 to 150 tons, or 220 to 330,000 pounds. Before any people are transported to Mars, several cargo missions will be undertaken, in order to transport all the requisite equipment, habitats, and supplies. Equipment that would accompany the early groups would include machines to produce fertilizer, methane, and oxygen from Mars' atmospheric nitrogen and carbon dioxide, and the planet's subsurface water ice, as well as construction materials to build transparent domes for crop growth. You might be asking yourself, why do we need to colonize Mars? Well, it's time to discuss why Elon Musk is making a plan to colonize Mars. Musk said his desire to colonize Mars is driven by the same passion that fuels people to climb mountains. That seems odd, right? Nah, well, think about it. That is, for the challenge. He said, just like lots of people who climb mountains, like people who die on Mount Everest all the time, he said these people are doing it for the challenge, and that's exactly why he proposed colonizing Mars. He said the price of a ticket to Mars would cost $10 billion per person, with no guarantee of return, no guarantee of survival during the trip, or even during landing. But despite the daunting journey, Musk sees a worthwhile trade-off. People are complaining that with such a huge amount of money, his plan would not help mankind. And if we compare his price to the Apollo moon mission, obviously, it's better because that project was over $200 billion in today's dollars, and it could only send 12 people to the moon. But he said he's not sure whether the human race could survive should there be a third world war. Well, if that happens, Earth will be plunged to the Dark Ages. He said the spaceship would be an escape hatch for everyone because he's planning to reduce the cost without affecting the efficiency. He continued on that nuclear tension's on the rise, and if there should be nuclear warfare, the Red Planet wouldn't be affected, which makes it a suitable place for the human race. Even though SpaceX has lots of money, SpaceX and Musk interplanetary plans have seen setbacks. He needs more money, and he's investing in some other expensive endeavors in order to finance his colonization project. Musk offered some predictions for what he thinks governance on Mars might look like. He also said he'd love to live there too. The SpaceX founder suggested his title might be Emperor, but then he said it's only a joke. Not everyone gets the irony, he said. Musk said he imagines Mars would have a direct democracy instead of the system used now, which is a representative democracy whereby elected officials represent a group of people. 
On Mars, he expects people will vote directly on issues. He said the centuries-old representative democracy made more sense at the nation's founding before the government could assume most people knew how to read and write. He urged future colonizers to keep laws short so people can easily read and digest the bills before voting. He warned that long laws have something suspicious going on. If the law exceeds the word count of Lord of the Rings, then something's wrong. I didn't say that. He did. On creating culture on Mars, Musk said, Mars must have really great bars. That's funny. Mars bars. <laughs> okay. Elon doesn't want the mission to Mars to, as a survival for rich people. He says no. He wants to make it cost effective and efficient. His goal is to cut the price down to the average median home price, which is about $200,000. So what do you think about this? Do you think there's some other motive behind his plan? I mean, would you be happy to vote for all issues directly from your mobile phone in the new democracy? I'd love to hear from you. Let us know in the comment section because your ideas are warmly welcomed. And as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, click the like button and hit the subscribe bell. And if there's something you need me to research and talk about, well, let me know by leaving a comment, and I'd be more than happy to make your video. Don't forget, subscribe and click that bell. And thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.